Hello, I am Lehman Kong, here to discuss the three key components of single variable summary statistics, measures of center, shape, and spread. Center. The center of a data set is a point which is deemed the expected value of a randomly selected point of the set. However, sometimes it is not appropriate to consider all the points, as some points, called outliers, may either be errors in data collection or an extremely unlikely case which may not be desirable. The effect of outliers should be considered when choosing your measure of center. Let us begin with center. For any given data set, there are three commonly used measures of center, mean, median, and mode. So uh, the mean is the sum of all the values divided by the total number of values. I think the best way to think about it is that it is the point at which the distribution would balance. For example, if I have a symmetrical distribution here represented by this ruler and this roll of duct tape, this roll of duct tape is the cluster around which most of the points are. Uh, right now, it, it is centered on the cluster, but if I move it out to one side, this is the tail, and it will pull Right, so now it's not actually balancing at the center of a cluster, but it's balancing around uh, one inch to the right of where it previously was, though the center or the cluster has moved a significant portion. So this is to demonstrate in the case of an extremely skewed distribution that the tail does indeed play a very large role on the value of the mean. Um, it is easily influenced and thus it's not robust or uh, resistant to outliers. So for a finite sample or population, the mean is the total of all the data divided by the total count of the data. Very simple. However, if you're trying to find the mean point in a continuous data set or a data set approximated by a curve, we must use calculus to find the point. As in almost all cases, the summation is replaced with an integral, so the expression becomes something like, uh, which is essentially the point which balances area on each side of a point weighted with distance from the point. So the median is the point such that exactly half the other points lie on either side of it. All that matters is the count and order of the data points where they actually are is irrelevant. Uh, therefore, it doesn't matter whether the maximum value in my set is 10 or 1000. As long as it's more than the median, the median stays the same. For that reason, it is said to be a robust statistic. The median is not affected by outliers. On the other hand, it is affected by skew. Since a skew distribution will have a different number of points on either side of the original line, the line must move to a new location so that the balance of count is once again restored. To solve for the median, I must first list out the points in increasing the order. Now I can simply cross out one point on either side until either one or two are left. If I have one, that is a median. If I have two, then I use the midpoint between these as the median. If the data set is particularly large, then it becomes inconvenient to use a crossing out method. Instead, I assign the median as the point m plus 1 over 2, where n is the total number of points. Of course, a non-integer solution would indicate that the midpoint of the two adjacent integer points is the median. The median of continuous distribution is far simpler than the mean. It is simply the point where the area on either side is the same. Because we know that the total area under the curve is always 1, it is the point at which either side has an area of 1 half. Mode. Mode is the most frequently recurring value in a data set. Mode is the simplest of all measures of center. In fact, the mode of a distribution is not necessarily a measure of center at all. Only when a distribution has a single peak, such as a normal distribution, will the mode be near the center of the data. Using the mode as the center has several drawbacks compared to using mean and median. Sometimes it is entirely impossible to find a mode. If any more than one point shares the highest frequency, then it is not possible to determine a mode. Also, especially for continuous data, there is a likely special case that no two points repeat. Therefore, the frequency of each is one, and no mode exists. Even if this direct contradiction is averted, the result will be a fallacy. For example, here, in a two-peaks distribution, 
one peak is slightly higher than the other, therefore it is determined to be the center. This is obviously not true. In this example, two non-central points are coincidentally equal. They are the mode, but they are not the center. For these two examples, it is simply inappropriate to use the mode as a center. For these two, however, it may be possible to compensate for the problem. Breaking the points into intervals allows the mode to be determined. However, this causes a loss of data. Nevertheless, when appropriate, the mode does have some advantages. Because it is only the peak, it is completely independent of both skew and outliers. Additionally, when working with discrete data, the mode is the only measure which actually determines the most likely event, as opposed to simply the average event. Nevertheless, it is only with extremely skewed distributions like this where the mode better represents the main cluster of data than the median or mean. For a continuous distribution, the mode is simply the highest possible value of the function within the given interval. This is usually the point at which the derivative of the function is zero. There are many different shapes of distributions. Uniform, unimodal, and bimodal, continuous, and discrete, and many others. This is a particularly important unimodal distribution called a normal distribution. It is the infinite case of the bimodal distribution here. These two are skewed normal distributions. The top is left skewed, meaning that the left tail is longer. The bottom is right skewed, meaning that the right tail is longer. In a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are the same. In a skewed distribution, the mean is pulled by the tail more than the median, which is pulled more than the mode. Therefore, the three values will be different. Skewness is often measured by the skewness factor. The skewness factor is equal to either three times the difference between the mean and median divided by the standard deviation, or the difference between the mean and the mode divided by the standard deviation. It should be evident that the difference between the mean and mode is usually three times the difference between the mean and median. It is worth noting that a positive skewness factor indicates a right skew, while a negative skewness factor indicates a left skew. Spread is a way to try to quantify the average distance from the center. There are two main systems of measuring spread, what I call discrete and continuous. This is what I call the discrete model of spread. It uses the interquartile range and the range as measures. While range is extremely sensitive to outliers, interquartile range is relatively resistant as it is a median of either side of the median of the entire set. By definition, the range contains 100% of the points, while the interquartile range contains 50% of them. This is a continuous system it also has two measures, variance and standard deviation. Standard deviation is normally used because it is more intuitive. Here in the diagram, one and two standard deviation markers have been laid out. In a normal distribution, 95% of points will lie within two standard deviations and 68 within one standard deviation. The standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. However, the calculation for the variance varies from population to sample. Sample standard deviation equals the square root of the summation of x minus x bar squared divided by m minus 1. Population standard deviation, sigma, is the square root of the summation of x minus mu squared divided by n. The sample standard deviation tries to predict the population standard deviation. While not as sensitive as range, both population and sample standard deviation and variance are affected by outliers. Interquartile range should always be used with a median, and standard deviation should always be used with a mean. For reference, one interquartile range is equal to roughly 1.34 standard deviations for a normal curve. Because spread is often affected by outliers, outliers are usually removed. An outlier is defined as any point 1.5 
or more standard deviations above or below the mean, or 1.5 IQRs above the third quartile, or 1.5 IQRs below the first quartile. While the empirical rule, that is the 68, 95, 99.7 for 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations respectively, works well for normal distributions, a different rule has to be used for other distributions. In general, for any distribution, Chebyshev's inequality tells us that within k standard deviations, at least 1 minus k squared of the points must be contained. In general, for any distribution, Chebyshev's inequality tells us that no more than 1 over k squared of the data points may lie outside k standard deviations. That concludes this review of single variable summary statistics. Good luck in your exam.